Hello, beautiful Scorpio, and welcome to June 2020. Are you ready for this? Because this is a month <laughs> for the record books in some ways. It's just a really powerful month. We have two eclipses. We have Venus doing the second half of her retrograde. We have Mercury doing its retrograde. We have some meetings in the sky that are really powerful. In fact, over on my Patreon, thank you for those of you who have joined me over there. We're going to be diving so much deeper on all of this, but let's dive into how this is affecting you. So right off the bat this month, full moon in Sagittarius. So this is in your second house, and this is a lunar eclipse. It's only going to be slightly blocked out, so it's very partial. But the energetics of this, right, are opening you up to who and what you want to welcome in. What is your relationship to abundance? The other big things that are happening this month, Mercury is doing its retrograde in Cancer in your ninth house. And that will last until July 12th. We have the Sun moving into Cancer. And shortly after that, a new Moon in Cancer with a solar eclipse that will be visible in Asia and Af parts of Asia and Africa. And that is big, right? All this energy moving into Cancer this month is having you reassess your worldview and what you think you have to do and who you think you have to be. And this is really important. This is one of the last, this is the last eclipse we're gonna have in Cancer. This closes out a year and a half long cycle that has been all about what it means to have the North Node of the Moon in Cancer. We're finishing it. Uh, and we're doing it right along with the summer solstice up here in the Northern Hemisphere. So it is just very symbolic energy. It's very truth bringing energy. And I actually have a really strong message for Scorpio. When I sat down with your energy, one of the things I was trying to do, and I'll start to shuffle here, is parse through what I felt was a challenge. It was like I could feel something was hard and something was difficult, challenging, but rewarding. And I was trying to figure out the difference, you know, because there's such a thing as something just being hard and, and f emptying us out and being pointless and just being about the hardness of it. And there are things that are challenging, a little scary, new, that are rewarding. And how do we find that difference? Because sometimes it just seems like we're just encouraged to look for the hard things and do it anyway. And I realize that sometimes what we're doing when we're doing the hard things is we are doing, what makes them hard is that we have to wear a mask and pretend to be something other than what we are while we're doing this thing, right? that isn't really emanating from us. That feels unrewardingly hard. Conversely, something that is rewarding to us, yes, it could be challenging. Yes, you could have days where you wanna cry in frustration because you're trying to learn a new language or live in a new space and, you, and the learning curve is really steep and sometimes you don't know what you're doing and you just feel like you can't do anything right for the day. Yet, there's something deeper going on there. And this month, is going to be asking you, where are you wearing a mask? And doing something hard, yes, but does it have virtue if it comes from <laughs> Ten of Swords? Oh, I know I'm working with Scorpio energy and we're getting straight to the transformation. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, you know, we think sometimes, we're often told there's virtue in wearing a mask. There's virtue in putting ourselves through the ringer. There's virtue in sticking the course. Fixed signs, as you know, I'm a Leo, so I'm with you. Fixed signs, we tend to stay the course. What a beautiful quality, however, however the shadow side, you know where I'm going with this, is that we stay the course sometimes for things, two of swords, that we don't need to. We don't have to. And this is where there's going to be some parsing out here. And this is where all this energy in Cancer, the Mercury retrograde, the sun moving there, this final eclipse with the new moon in Cancer, all of this energy working with you there is having us look at your worldview around these identities, these issues. 
Not only that, don't forget that most of this month, the sun is going to be moving through Gemini. And most of this month, Venus is going to be retrograding through Gemini. And this is eighth house energy for you, Scorpios. So eighth house, you rule the eighth house. This is all about transformation, shedding of the skin, going through the underworld and coming out the other side. You're working very heavily with your natural element of transformation and transmutation. So this month, we are not messing around, my Scorpio friends. We need to get rid of these masks. Right? When we, are for, when we feel we are forced to keep wearing a mask, when we are forced to keep playing a role, it's not who we are, what ends up happening is that we build up a lot of rage, a lot of frustration, that then makes it almost difficult to be in joy and lightness when we want to just appreciate a new path moving forward. We don't want to build up resentment, right? So this is a moment to let it go, to let things come full circle and then release the sun i love that i love this okay it's making me feel better now about those first two cards and how intense they are um we're just gonna pour, pull four cards today so i want to keep the messages really crisp this month because there's just so much else going on and we don't want to get muddled up with a hundred cards and every conversation we could possibly have we want to really just hear what it is in page of swords Okay, there's a lot to do with communication, the use of language, the use of words, the use of thoughts in this reading. Three swords cards, right? And swords is always going to connect with our intellectual inner self and what that inner self and the monologue we have going on is doing with us to create or destroy. And because you're, you're working with such transformative energy this month, <laughs> two eclipses, and the work going through your eighth and your ninth houses, this is a month to pay attention to which of those stories you want to be bringing forward. Now, I love the Ten of Swords, actually. I know there's going to be some naysayer that talks about how, you know, no, this means you're getting stabbed in the back and betrayed. The Ten of Swords is the end of a cycle, right? It's the end of the sword suit. It's the completion it's when something has been learned completely so that it can be let go. And this is a crucial juncture point because often, you know, we feel like we have to keep reliving it. We have to keep living in the haunted house of whatever it is that we learned, right? And that if we don't do our due diligence and sit with it long enough that it, we, aren't, we aren't suffering enough, that we aren't trying enough. Now, actually, conversely, I think this month the lesson is that that we don't have to sit in the haunted house, that we don't have to sit in that darkness. Uh, this is a month that where your message is actually has everything to do with shedding that skin, being a chameleon um, in the sense of getting to sit on and with the things that really bring out your true colors. So there's something closing out here and releasing. You can think about it as maybe like a karmic tie I'm not a big fan of those words, but that's what's showing up. You can think of it as the closeout of a commitment you made to something that has finished and completed. Um, and it can be the closeout of holding yourself in captivity around something that you think you need to keep doing. Now, it's interesting because while there's this Ten of Swords, there's also this Two of Swords, which is asking you to sit still for a moment and not take a whole bunch of dramatic action, but just look right? The two of swords is where there's a fork in the road, right? Um, where you're trying to discern something, where you're trying to judge something. Is it right for me? Is it not? Now the two of swords, what it, it cautions against is we can get into our minds, looping through our 1000 thoughts, our pros and cons lists. We can get really intellectual about why something is something we're supposed to keep doing or not. Um, and the Two of Swords is a reminder that we have to listen to that deeper gut knowing. Now you all have water intuitive energy like crazy, but you're also intellectual. You're also uh, really good at mental, getting mentally stimulated. So lean more into your mysterious unknowing side to give you guidance this month. It's going to give you some really good, crisp, clear guidance. In fact, the more you're okay with kind of feeling this release, whatever this is, 
the more the sun comes out to shine once we get to can cancer season once we get to that summer solstice once we get to that eclipse on the 21st once we get into venus going direct and mars moving into aries on june 28th the sun comes out right as with anything once we release an attachment we close something out energetically immediately almost immediately some new ray of sunshine comes in to greet us right it's it's kind of wild how quickly this happens but it only happens once we have officially taken that step um, whether energetically or practically to close something out it never happens before we always want it we always want the assurance of the thing coming in before we take the dramatic step because wouldn't that be nice to have it lined up that way i know i'm making the right choice already it's like you have to know it at that deeper level because <laughs> otherwise you can have every sign in the world outside of yourself and not want to read the sign and not want to hear the guidance, right? So these are opportunities coming in. These are new rays of sunshine filling your world. Yes, learning new skills, going on a new adventure, absolutely. Um, being invited into <laughs> a new chapter of excitement, a new way of doing things right. And this is where I think that message about what makes something just difficult and taxing and what makes something challenging and rewarding, this is challenging and rewarding. This is pulling you to step up to the next plate and have it be something that does feel warm and good and positive for you. This is all about creative authenticity liberation of your voice liberation of your spirit <laughs> this kid is definitely not wearing a mask i will tell you that i mean i guess it's an interesting word to be using the mask thing because it's so political right now but you know what i mean this is about a person <laughs> this is about an internal personality this is more about like the idea of carnival those kinds of masks so i want to clarify there uh <laughs> just now realizing that that word is no longer as uh, symbolic as it used to be um, but this is about feeling that lightness of spirit in doing the right thing in doing right by ourselves and doing right by those around us and also by feeling free and curious to explore these are very exploratory energies very youthful energies popping up to greet you here so kind of be aware that this month is is <laughs> a lot like a flower blossoming it starts off really scrunched up and mysterious and you're sitting with some discomfort and some closing out of some things and then it starts to just bloom so trust yourself in this transformative process okay i have a solstice blessing to cheers you with with my little water goblet here what is life without a goblet right this is your solstice blessing May it feel easy to take bold steps. May you step into the river of life and take your seat at the table of life and let it take shape before your eyes. May you feel relaxed in who you are becoming. Cheers to you, my friends. May you feel relaxed in who you are becoming. I like that a lot. I think that represents the sun quite well here. You know, self-trust is so important when we realize we are shifting and we look in the mirror and we see somebody so different from who we've been even six months ago. This month is definitely a culmination of how much we have all grown over the last year and a half and definitely over the last six months. It it's powerful in that way because you you realize we don't just stay we're not static beings right and so even when we think maybe we haven't been doing much or we haven't changed that much you know june is kind of a reminder that indeed we have indeed we have changed quite a bit indeed what we would have said yes to in november is no longer something we want to say yes to in june and vice versa what we would have said no to in november is something that we now would be very excited to say yes to in june and it's always good to have these moments of revolution evolution and check-in to be aware of how those yeses and nos have changed and how those desires have changed because they always change 
Um, like I said, we are doing such a deep dive over on Patreon. I am so grateful, so, so deeply grateful to those of you who have joined me. You've helped me so much. You have made my life such a rich, magical place by joining me over there. I can't thank you enough for what you have given me and your voices and your wisdom and the words that you share with me and just your presence being over there. It is huge for me. You have no idea. I can't tell you how huge it is for me that you join me over there. It's it's changed my life. Um, and I'm doing so much deep diving with these eclipses, with uh, Mercury retrograde, with the uh, finishing out of Venus retrograde. We're in the midst of our weekly workshopping of Venus retrograde right now. So if you're looking for extra materials, extra insight, I would definitely recommend you head over there and check out what we have going on. Um, you can find me on my Instagram at Sarah Verba or on my website, sarahtara.com. And I would love to see you in either of those places. Uh, you can find Pink Loon, of course, her gorgeous jewelry on her Etsy shop as well. I'm sending you all so much love, my Scorpio clan. I hope you are doing so well. Trust yourselves, love yourselves, and I'll see you so soon.